The Locke Volterra model is a pair of coupled differential equations used to model the populations of two species where one is the predator and the other is its prey, and each of the equations has just two terms. Firstly, for the prey, which we'll label x, there's a term alpha x. Here, alpha is just a constant, and this term represents new young being born, and it says that the population would grow exponentially if there were no predators. And there's also a term for the prey being eaten, which is proportional to the sizes of both the prey population and the predator population. This makes sense intuitively, because the more prey and predators there are, the more chances there are for them to encounter each other, resulting in a nice meal for the predator. Next, for the predator, we have a term which says that the population growth is proportional to the amount of prey that they eat, and also a term to represent the natural death of the predators as they get older. Now, this is clearly a very basic model, which makes lots of assumptions. For example, there's no environmental limit on the size of the populations, or any limit to the appetite of the predators. So, it certainly isn't perfect, but we can still look at the behaviour the system predicts, and see what we can learn from it. So, to analyse this system, we're going to need to construct a phase plane, which is just another way of saying a graph of x and y which lets us see the paths that the equations predict. And whenever we do that, the first step is to find what are called null clines, which are lines on which dx by dt or dy by dt is zero. So if we were to solve dx by dt equals zero, that is saying that alpha x minus beta xy is zero, and for this to be the case, either x is zero or y equals alpha over beta. And these two lines are our x null clines. So we can go ahead and draw these on the graph, but because dx by dt is zero on these lines, that means that only y is changing whenever we are on these lines. So we must cross them vertically. So we'll put some little ticks on them to make it clear we need to cross them vertically. Next, we need to do the same thing for y, so we can solve dy by dt equals zero, and we find that either y equals zero, or x is a constant gamma over delta. So we'll draw these on the phase plane as well, in a different colour, this time with little ticks telling us that we need to cross these lines horizontally. OK, so we know the x and y null clines. Now the next step is to find the stationary points, the steady states where the system doesn't move and these are where the two sets of null lines meet. And it's quite clear here that there are two fixed points, one at the origin, and a second one at gamma over delta, alpha over beta. We could also have found the stationary points from the equations of the null lines. That's how you'd normally do it, but here the null lines are just straight lines, so it's nice and simple. So now we have our two stationary points, we want to know how the trajectories behave around them. In particular, are they stable? Do they attract trajectories towards them? Or are they unstable and the trajectories move away? Well, we can work that out by looking at the eigenvalues of this matrix M. And this just says that we take the time derivatives of x and y, and then take the partial derivatives of those with respect to x and y and put them into a matrix. It sounds complicated, and it is a little bit, but it comes from linearizing the system, so taking an approximation around the stationary points to help us see whether or not they're stable. I might do another video explaining the theory of where this comes from and how it works, but for now we'll just trust that it does work. So working this out, in our case, m is just this, and we'll need to evaluate it separately at each fixed point. So firstly, for the fixed point at 0, 0, the matrix M is diagonal. It only has non-zero entries on its main diagonal. And we can calculate its eigenvalues, although for a diagonal matrix, the eigenvalues are always just the numbers on the diagonal, and that's what we get here. The eigenvalues are alpha and minus gamma, and since both alpha and gamma are positive, we have one positive eigenvalue and one negative one which means this stationary point is a saddle. Now, a saddle is unstable, but we can also find the eigenvectors to help us see what's going on. 
and the positive eigenvalue, alpha, corresponds to the eigenvector 1, 0 in the x-direction. So this means a population of only prey grows exponentially. And the negative eigenvalue, minus gamma, corresponds to the eigenvector 0, 1 in the y-direction. And this means that if we have a population of only predators without any prey to eat, they'll die out, as we expect. Next, for the non-zero stationary point, we can do the same thing. And we find that the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, which means this point is something called a centre. It's neither stable nor unstable. Instead, the trajectories nearby look like circles or ellipses, and just go round the fixed point. And now that we know about the fixed points, we can draw our phase plane. Now, the null plines split the plane into regions, and we want to quickly check the direction that x and y are moving in each region. This just helps us make sure that we draw the paths correctly. So we'll put a little arrow in each region to show whether x and y are increasing or decreasing. And then finally, we can draw some trajectories, making sure that the two stationary points look like a saddle and a centre. Here I've drawn the trajectories as closed loops, but we don't know that that's actually correct. They could be slowly spiralling towards or away from the centre, but we can get a computer to draw the same thing for us. Here on the left we have the same plot. There's a vector field in the background showing the direction and speed of trajectories, and on the right is just a graph showing how x and y evolve over time. And we can see it looks periodic, with x, the prey population, peaking first, followed by the predator population. And the trajectory does look like a closed loop. It lines up with itself each time it goes around. But can we prove why this is the case? Well, if we want to do that, we need to look for a conserved quantity, a bit like energy in a physical system. So we need to find some combination of variables whose time derivative is zero. Well, to begin with, we can multiply our equations by delta and beta so that the x, y terms cancel out, but then we're left with some linear terms that we can't get rid of. And the next step is a bit tricky if you don't know it, but we can actually look at what happens if you take the derivatives of log x and log y, and this gives only linear and constant terms. And if we multiply these equations so that the constant terms cancel out, we find that the linear terms balance perfectly with those we already have on the left. So we can combine these equations by subtracting the right from the left, and we can see that this quantity is constant along any given trajectory, so they are indeed closed loops. And finally, for simplicity, let's say that the constants are all equal. Then this simplifies to x minus log x plus y minus log y equals c. And plotting x minus log x on the right, we can see that whenever one population moves upwards, the other must move down to balance it. And the minimum on the graph is at the fixed point, where the trajectory can't move anywhere. It has to stay where it is. Like a still pendulum hanging straight down, it doesn't have any energy to move anywhere. Obviously, it's not exactly energy in this case, but it's an interesting analogy. I might make more videos on phase planes and other interesting dynamical systems soon, but that's all for this video. And if you made it through all that maths, then go and enjoy the sunshine like my dog Thor is here. As always, please subscribe if you'd like to see more, and comment any suggestions for things you'd like to see in future videos down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.